Hey guys, Jason. And I know I've been talking about ASIC Miner for a long time, so I kind of want to talk about a new chip series that they're coming out with. This chip series is the BE200 series. And I think this is kind of interesting because this is the first chip design that's coming along where they're willing to work with developers of hardware to utilize this chip to its fullest. So, for instance, normally, you know, ASIC Miner produces their chips and they also produce their own their boards, you know, the USB device that goes into your computer, they create the actual big boards, um, but they've really never been very cooperative. They, I mean, they'll sell their, their chips to other providers, but they, they don't really let, you know, very much customization to go on. Well, they're actually very, very active right now working on different um, product management sites such as GitHub, and their goal is to make sure that these um, chips can be utilized in a variety of devices that anyone can use, um, most likely people that have a little bit of product design skills and chip um, circuit board engineering you know, skill sets because you know you are basically designing a chip circuit board when you're putting these chips on them. But I think this chip's kind of interesting. They're, they're also working on a new really um, ergonomical design for their new, um, the whole of their new boards because you know there's multiple chips on a board. And it's kind of interesting. It's kind of like the new Apple one where it shows all the chips. Now, um, they're talking about later on, you know, allowing to have um, cases go on the top because, you know, sometimes you don't want your chips to be exposed to the environment. For instance, when you're Bitcoin mining or Litecoin mining and you have your GPUs out in the air because, you know, open air cases are sometimes the best, you get a lot of dust or um, dirt that gets in the fans and kind of slows down your performance. So that might be an issue that they're going to have to work around. They'll probably end up having um, a case that goes around this really cool urbanautical design. But let's talk about the device itself. So it will hold about 768 giga hashes. Now, for someone like me who's got back, who was in Bitcoin in early 2011, it blows my mind that we have a device that can handle that much hash rate because it's just crazy. I mean, we talked about devices just last year. We were referring to mega hashes. You know, if they had 25 mega hashes, they were pretty good mining. And suddenly, you know, we're talking about 768 giga hashes, you know, which is 768,000 mega hashes. It, it's boggling to the mind that they have this many high capacity devices even out in the field right now. But essentially, there'll be um, components of four 192 giga hash boards. So, this device that they'll basically design will have four boards on it. I'm assuming they'll also, I don't, this is not a confirmation, but I'm assuming they'll also sell each individual board to um, individuals who want to buy such a device um, because we've seen cases out there in the in I call it the wild but you know in data centers where people have created their own you know devices that can handle you know up to 20 30 boards in one device it's a very big long device that has special power systems and everything but it's very interesting and so you want the consumer to be able to have that option um, so that's pretty cool now this is where I think it's mind boggling and the standards have been out there for a while but to me that this is you know still this efficient you know, is mind-boggling to someone that's still using GPUs. It'll be about 0.85 to 0.92 cents per giga hash, so a watt a giga hash. It's crazy because you know that's not even a full watt per giga hash, and it it's crazy. So I did some calculations because I wanted to play this number out. So assuming that you're using, you know, the max 652. To 700, so 652 at the low end using the 8, 8 point, um, 0.85 watts, all the way up to 706 watts for this device. Now you might say, well, man, 706 watts is a lot of wattage. And again, this is um, ASIC boards. This is not script boards, but you know, so ASIC boards are really interesting because they use a lot less, you know, power, um, or because they're boards versus you know a GPU mining device. But to think that an entire device that mines 768 giga hashes could use only 706 watts maximum blows me away. I think that's a very, very crazy number. You know, thinking back to the days just two or three years ago when everyone I talked to was using GPUs to mine Bitcoin and, you know, each device would use three or 400 watts. And suddenly, and those would only get, you know, maybe two or three, you know, mega hashes. And the fact that this is getting so much more it blows my mind. It, it just really does. So I'm going to use my numbers in my area at 13 cents per kilowatt hour. So at that, it would only cost you about $792 a year for this device to run. That's pretty good, guys. I mean, I, that's really awesome. Um, again, ASIC Miner, while their shares are down to like really, really cheap, they used to, you know, back in the day, they used to be up to like 4.9 bitcoins a share, which was crazy. You know, now they're down to like 
two, three, I think last time I checked, um, Bitcoins a share, which is substantially, substantially less. But one of the things that caused that is you have so many other players in the market right now, which obviously, you know, competition brings prices down. It also means that those who invested in ASIC miner in the beginning, you know, probably sold out when it was at two or three dollars or two or three bitcoins per share if they were if they were lucky. If not, you know, they're probably holding out for a gym three and four boards. So, you know, the prices really went down. Um, probably a great time to buy it. Although the dividends I have to mention are down a lot lower. Back in the day when it was higher up, the dividends used to be really, really substantial. They used to have up to, uh, one time they had like 12% in the entire net network. And now they're down to like 0.5%, 1%. So again, they lost a substantial amount of mining power because they're selling devices too. You know, and So it's a lot easier when you're mining to have renewable income than if you're selling boards, which obviously because of competition, the margin of profit is going to be minimal on that. But anyway, awesome device, awesome chipset. I'm kind of interested to see what other companies use this chip set and these boards if they do utilize boards if they don't make their own. What do they do with this? You know, how, What kind of devices do they make? Are they going to make devices that can hold 20 boards or are they going to stay with the standard 4 to 5 board um, you know, area? Because um, normally we see people try to stay around that range because they use um, – because if you don't know this, computers use DC power. They convert the AC in your wall to DC power. and Essentially, you have to buy DC power. Um, we call them PC things. They're basically power. The power thing that plugs into your computer. I don't know exactly how to describe it. Just uh, just a power. I call it DC power, and that device allows it to convert. Like I said, but it also is used in servers and stuff. But you're not going to get over about 1,500 watts of one of these things. It's very rare and they're very expensive. I've seen a few 2,000 watt ones, but that's crazy and they're very expensive. And yeah, they're going to break your pocketbook. So normally when they make these, because it's a lot more complex than to tie multiple GP or not GPUs, PSUs, I'm sorry, the tie multiple PSUs together, you're usually constri you know, constricted to that 1500 watt um, limit, or sometimes it's even you know 1200 watt, depending on what brand you go with and you know what's your preference on PSUs. So really when we're hitting at 706 watts with four boards, maximum you usually get is about five boards, unless you have... You know, we're talking about bigger boards. Sometimes they go with smaller boards, and that's always kind of interesting because the smaller boards pull less power, so you can maximize more boards. But in reality, the hash rate is usually the same because, you know, maybe four or five mini boards make up one big board, and so they might have, you know, 20 mini boards for a comparison of five large boards. So again, you know, the wattage is kind of a limiting factor in that. But anyway, I just want to up you guys on, <laughs> update you guys on ASIC Miner, tell you you know the stock price, tell you about the new devices that are coming out, and I kind of informed you a little bit about about PSUs. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.